Have you ever struggled to make smooth, glowing gradients in Adobe Illustrator where colors flow beautifully without any muddiness or harsh lines? My name is Laura Coyle, and in this video, I'm teaching a hands-on exercise so you can work with me or just watch, and you'll learn about how adjusting saturation and brightness in your colors is going to make for the smoothest gradient transitions. And we'll do this using the Recolor Artwork feature because of its intuitive color wheel interface. So let's get started. You can learn a lot from watching this, but if you want to follow along, download the exercise file from below the video. And you'll need to open just three panels. Make sure you have the control bar across the top of your window, and you'll find this in the window menu under control. Then open up the color panel and the gradient panel. Those are also located in the window menu. On the color panel, we'll be using the HSB sliders. So get those from the panel options. We're going to be talking a lot about hue, saturation, and brightness in this exercise. So that means this is an exercise you can only do in an RGB document. This will not work in CMYK, so we're using an RGB document. All right, now that we're set up, let's get started. We're gonna take this gradient rectangle and make a change to it. Then we'll copy it and move it to the next space, make another change, then copy and move it to the next, and so on. And with each step, We'll learn something about making smooth color transitions and a little something about the recolor artwork feature. And one quick note, as you're watching this video, you may see a bit of banding in the gradients. That's because of the video resolution or maybe the screen you're watching on, things I don't have control over, but the gradients in this exercise file are smooth. And you'll see that if you're working along with me on a good quality monitor. Let's start by selecting this first gradient. It's traveling from orange to blue. These are complementary colors, meaning they're exactly opposite each other on the color wheel. And when you create a gradient between two colors like this, Illustrator automatically generates this color in the middle, this muddy middle color. And this is what we wanna change. Now let's go over to the gradient panel so we can look at this. Here's our orange and our blue, and we can see that muddy transition in the middle. What I want us to do now is create another stop here. So just click below the slider. That creates a new gradient stop. It doesn't change the color, but it makes it available to us so that we can change it in Recolor Artwork. So now with that gradient selected, go up to the top control bar and open up the Recolor Artwork panel. And the reason I'm having us do this is because we have this wonderful color wheel interface here, and it's just the best illustration of why some colors work together and some colors don't. Here we can see the opposite colors on the color wheel, the orange and blue, and here is that muddy color in the middle. Well, this color wheel here not only is showing us hues around the wheel, but it's also showing us the saturation level of those colors. So the most saturated colors are on the outside of the wheel, traveling toward desaturated colors at the center of the wheel. So it's very easy to see here that that muddy middle color that Illustrator chose for us is totally desaturated. And one of the best ways to make smooth gradient transitions is to keep the saturation level similar between all of your colors. Now, when we work in recolor artwork, we can use this large circle here to drag colors around and find a different arrangement. Let me go up and reset. The colors will all move together. However, we can use this link button here and click on that. We'll see dotted lines here, and this allows us to adjust these colors individually. So I'm gonna take this middle color here and drag it all the way out to the outer edge so that it has the same saturation level as the orange and blue. And we can see with this plum color, we're already getting rid of that muddy transition. It looks really nice. But that's not the only thing that's helping make this gradient transition smooth. Having the saturation levels the same, that's great. But what we're also doing here is if you think of traveling from orange to blue as like a trip around the wheel, I'm just dragging my cursor around so you can see that, it's important to break up the trip, break up that distance. If I were to move this plum colored stop closer to the orange, which creates a really long distance here, it's starting to look muddy in that area. And the same thing, if I move this stop closer to the blue, then between this color and the orange, it starts to get muddy. So in addition to making the saturation levels the same, we're also breaking up the distance, placing this stop evenly between the orange and the blue, making this a better gradient. All right, now when you're done recoloring something, all you have to do is click away 
and that completes the recoloring process. So we're gonna take this new gradient here, hold down on the Option or Alt key, and drag it over to the next, and we'll make another change to it. So with this selected, let's go up and open up the Recolor Artwork panel, go down to the Link button, and unlink the colors so we can change them individually. And now what we're gonna do, we've got the saturation levels all the same, let's do the brightness levels too. So when you wanna change an individual color stop here in Recolor Artwork, you can double click on it to open up the color picker. Let me move the color picker over here. And here are the HSB values. We've got the hue, the position of that orange on the wheel, then 100% saturation and 90% brightness. And we can see that in the cursor right here. This edge, of the color picker shows you the most saturated colors. This edge shows you the most desaturated colors. The brightness level is the highest, 100% here along the top and 0% here along the bottom. So the fastest way to change this to 100% saturation and 100% brightness is just to take our cursor and drag it right up into the corner. But you can also come in here and type in those values if you like. Let me click OK. Now let's go over to the plum color and do the same thing. We'll double click on it and we'll just take that cursor and move it into the top right corner. So we've got saturation and brightness at 100% and click OK. And now we'll double click here on the blue and do the same thing. 100% saturation and 100% brightness and click OK. So now that all of our colors have the highest saturation and brightness, let's just click away. And this is the first step to making a glowy pastel gradient. It's not really where we want it right now, but we've got another step here. So let's hold down on the Option or Alt key and copy this over to the next space. And in this step, we're gonna desaturate this gradient. So open up the Recolor Artwork panel. And here we can work with all these colors linked together. So like I showed you before, the larger color circle can move all of these around in the same arrangement. And as I move inward, I lower the saturation outward, I raise the saturation, and they're all moving together. If you move one of the smaller color circles, you wind up changing the saturation level of just that one color. And we've gone to the trouble of making those saturation levels equal, so we wanna move them all together at the same rate. So first, go up to the top right and reset if you've been following along. Now here's one of my favorite shortcuts that I don't think a lot of people know about, in the recolor artwork color wheel here, but you can hold down on the shift key. So hold down on the shift key and then move that large orange circle toward the center. And holding on shift, what this does is it keeps you from moving left or right. So it maintains those hues that we set up while only changing the saturation level as you drag inward. So go ahead and drag inward to desaturate this and find a level of pastel glowiness that you like. And let's see, I might do mine just a little bit lighter and then click away to complete that change. Now let's take this, copy it and drag it down here. And for this step, what we're gonna do is just make a variation of this. Let's open up Recolor Artwork. So really this step is all about knowing that once you set up a beautiful gradient that's working for you, you can use this in Recolor Artwork kind of like a template to make other gradients. So for this, I'm gonna hold down on the shift key because I can also change the hue while maintaining the saturation level. So shift helps you in either direction to constrain the hues or constrain the saturation level as you drag. And I'm choosing this sort of yellow and purple with this beautiful orange in between, kind of a sunset look there. And so once you set up a gradient that you like, you can use it like a template and very quickly come up with another color combination. And I'm using these in some of my own work where I have that sunset gradient and this pastel gradient. And then you can come in and use the gradient tool and the gradient panel to change the angle and customize these gradients to fit your own artwork. All right, so I'll click away. Now we're going to copy this over to the next space. And we're going to do something I call a shorter trip gradient. So we're gonna change the distance between the outer colors. And by the way, if we look at this gradient here on the gradient panel, you can see when I click on the yellow, we have a saturation level that's about 32% and a brightness that's 100%. And again, those levels are maintained through all of the colors. 
and in another step we'll look at how you can change the brightness level of all the colors on the wheel. But here, let's take this and open up Recolor Artwork. And now we're going to shorten the distance between yellow and purple. So once again, these are complementary colors. They're just opposite each other. It's a 180 degree trip right here. And so what we want to do is unlink these colors. And then again, you can hold down on the shift key to keep that saturation level the same and move this one inward and then move the purple inward. So we're creating something more like a 90 degree angle here. And what we're seeing is a really smooth transition. I want to saturate this up some more. So I'm going to go ahead and link these colors together. Hold on to the larger color circle, hold shift and drag outward. And now this is getting much more saturated and it's really beautiful. So when you start shortening the distance between the colors, those transitions get really buttery smooth. Now I'll click away. And in this next step, we'll work with the brightness level. So go ahead and option or alt copy this over to the next space. So now let's open up recolor artwork and we're going to darken and desaturate. First, I'm moving the orange circle here towards this purple color at the bottom of the wheel. And in this step, we're going to learn about these two buttons and this slider. The first button is the default. So we're seeing a saturation wheel here. The second button shows us the brightness wheel. So we can change whichever wheel we're working with. On the brightness wheel, the outer edge has 100% brightness going to 0% brightness in the center. And whichever wheel you have selected, I'll go back to the saturation wheel, the slider controls the opposite property. So on the saturation wheel, the slider can darken it up when you go to the left and it's darkening up the whole wheel as I'm doing this. You can see how much darker that's getting. Now I'll switch to the brightness wheel and I can desaturate by moving left and you can see the whole wheel display here colors aren't moving but everything is getting desaturated all at once so these sliders are really helpful i use this sometimes when i want to just add a little saturation or a little brightness uh, to any of my artwork so let's darken that up a little bit and we've created a beautiful foggy darker subtle gradient all of the gradients that we've created so far would make great background colors but next we're going to look at a dark to light gradient because so often we need our gradients to show dimension and lighting and shading. And so we're not going to maintain the exact same saturation and brightness levels, but we're going to gradate them in a way that creates a really smooth dark to light transition. So in recolor artwork, we can take a look at this gradient since we understand what's happening here. The darkest color is at the outer edge of the wheel. So it's the most saturated. The lightest color is toward the center of the wheel. It's the most desaturated and the middle color is somewhere in the middle. That's the default wheel, the saturation wheel. Let's switch to the brightness wheel. And now we can see our lightest color is the brightest at the outer edge. The darkest color has the least amount of brightness. So it's this gradual stepping of brightness and saturation that's creating this lovely dark to light transition. Now I'll click away and we'll look at this gradient over here in the gradient panel. And we can see the same thing. If I click on the darkest color, lowest brightness, highest saturation, the lightest color, lowest saturation, highest brightness, and the middle color, these two sliders are kind of passing each other toward the center. So when you set up a gradient with a dark color to a light color and you step the saturation and brightness in the way that I've done here, then you can use this gradient like we did before as a template to just find a different color. So I've copied it and moved it over to this space. I'm going to open up recolor artwork and switch to another color here. Just find a different color. So this can save you so much time when you're working with gradients, just creating some dark to light templates. Now in both of these, the colors were all the same. The hues were very close to each other, but let's look at this example in recolor artwork where the colors are farther apart. They're actually just about 90 degrees or a little bit more than that. We can also see that a little better here on the brightness wheel. So play with this, unlink the colors, use the shift key to see if you can create, you know, another combination, just gradating the saturation levels, gradating the brightness levels, to create something unique. And by the way, this gradient to begin with, I had saved a swatch for it in the swatches panel. And because I'm recoloring it here, 
Recolor Artwork creates a new gradient swatch for that changed gradient. So I'll click away to complete this. Now, once you've saved your gradients, whether they're in swatches or just color chips like this out on your artboard, you can copy them and make variations like we've seen. And then all you have to do to add them to your artwork is just use your eyedropper tool and click on a gradient to kind of soak it up and then hold down the option or alt key. And then you can use the eyedropper tool to paint by clicking on your object. So that's a really fun and efficient way to work. Now, somebody asked me, can we do this with freeform gradients? And so here I have a butterfly. Let's click on edit gradient so you can see the gradient stops there. This is a freeform gradient. And yes, we can edit these in recolor artwork on the color wheel. And I can just drag this around and find a different color arrangement. Or if I have a gradient like I have on this flower here in a linear gradient that I want to transfer to the butterfly, I can do that too. I just need to save the colors in the color stops first. So to do this, I've selected one of the petals and then come down to the folder icon here, click on that, and that will save from the selected artwork. So that's gonna save these individual stop colors. And I don't want global swatches. I'm gonna click okay. And there are my swatches now. So now what I can do is edit the gradient on the freeform gradient and just one by one, drag the swatches over the color stops in the freeform gradient and that just replaces them. So now I've transferred the gradient from the flower to the freeform gradient on the butterfly. All right, I hope this helps you make your gradient smooth and flowing. And if so, let me know in the comments, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. My name is Laura Coyle. I've been a freelance illustrator for many years, and now I teach Adobe Illustrator on YouTube and in my online learning community at lauracoylecreative.com. Thank you so much for watching.